Welcome in guys, Adam here, the Orlando Drummer. Great to see you all. Thank you for tuning in to another single lesson. So today we are learning um, a very interesting semi-triplet groove that I've titled Dancer. And I guess this is kind of dancey, um, but not really. It's a little bit more on the confusing side. It just has this heavy swing that I like to apply to it. We'll get into all of that stuff. It's definitely a weirdo. So let's get it on the screen, play it up to speed. We'll kind of get a ballpark for what's happening here, and then we'll break this guy down. It's weird, I know, very strange groove, especially when you apply that swing, it makes things a lot more confusing. So we're gonna learn this without a lot of swing today, then we'll talk about bringing that in a little bit later in the lesson. So for now, let's just talk about the exact pattern that we have happening. So really, the most important thing we need to understand here about the pattern is that we have these little brief moments of subdivision changes. So it is mostly in 16th notes, except for two very specific spots where we go up into 16th note triplets just for a very short period of time. So if we isolate beats two and four, you can see that the last three notes of those beats are where we go into 16th note triplets. And we only do this for like half a beat of music. So three 16th note triplets are sort of injected in those moments uh, into this fill, which is otherwise just in linear 16th notes. So let's work up to those triplet moments and then we can kind of make sense of what's happening there. So starting out on the downbeat of one very beginning, we have kick right, kick right, just sort of a 16th note upbeat dance pattern. And that leads us right into the backbeat that's on the downbeat of two, that loud left hand snare. So let's just play our first five notes, kick right, kick right, left. If you've never played a 16th note upbeat groove like that, it might be something that you just wanna get used to all on its own, just this sort of style of groove. Anyway, a lot of options there. It's a really cool uh, sort of halftime four on the floor kind of vibe. So we're uh, loosely based around that if you wanna explore that sort of groove environment. So after we have that downbeat of two, that's the left, the left hand that we just left off on. We're gonna put a kick drum after that on the E of beat two. And this sort of concludes the amount of 16th notes that we're playing before we have our subdivision change, uh, which happens on the very next note. So what I wanna do is just play to that right hand where the subdivision change starts. That is the upbeat or the center note of beat two. Let's just play that far. We're basically adding a kick drum and a right hand to what we just played. So that right hand is the beginning of our subdivision change, and we're gonna make that a right, left, left pattern. The left hands are both gonna be ghost notes on the snare, and they're gonna be phrased as 16th note triplets. So I just wanna play to, let's just say the dead center of this groove, where that kick drum is on the downbeat of three. We'll just play from the downbeat of one to the downbeat of three, stop, and just sort of hear this first half of our measure. Check it out.
Not terrible, right? So if you have that down, if you can get that feeling, that phrase, this sequence of notes down, we are not changing or adding that much to complete our entire measure here. So if we go to the downbeat of three, check out all of beat three and all of beat four. It is basically the exact same thing, same pattern, same orchestration, same subdivision changes, except when we have the triplet subdivision change halfway through beat four, that pattern is now right, right, left. So it's sort of a flipped around sort of version of our original pattern. And what really changes here is that when we play right, right up on the hi-hat, that leads us into that left hand backbeat. And this is our third or an extra backbeat that we're adding into this measure. So the uh of beat four or the very last available 16th note triplet in this measure, that's gonna be an additional backbeat. And it's coming off of um, this, this hi-hat part. This is a very um, Matt Garska kind of mannerism. It's like a digenti fusion sort of chop. The idea of digging in a right hand diddle on your hi-hat leading into a backbeat, this sort of vibe. that sort of thing. All sorts of things you can do with that idea of a really tight, aggressive hi-hat diddle leading into a backbeat. You can also do it in different subdivisions too. Um, but in this one, I think it works really, really well just adding that extra backbeat and giving the groove a little bit more of an interesting turnaround. So we're not just playing, um, you know, beats one and two over and over in a loop. So this also gives you kind of a mental challenge, right? Because as you're playing through, you've got to remember, am I on the right, left, left pattern or am I doing the right, right, left pattern with the backbeat in it, right? So. We don't really have much else to learn within this measure. These are all of the notes. It's just a matter of sort of um, executing this, getting the muscle memory down, and hearing this back and forth that's happening between the triplets. Which pattern are we playing? Uh, which one are you more comfortable with? Which one do you prefer, right? These are all things that we gotta work out. So, uh, with the notation on the screen, we're gonna slow this guy all the way down. I'll play it as slow as I can get away with. Then we'll go medium, then we'll go fast. Uh, then I will uh, circle back and I'll play it at that fast tempo again but then with a heavy swing, because that is a really cool option that you do have. Of course, totally up to you if you wanna swing this thing that hard. So yeah, let's, uh, let's check it out. Here's Dancer, three speeds. <laughs> 